Raising the Standards show. We are celebrating our 40th show today, right. and we are thrilled to have Dr. Gus Reyes to give us our practical tips. Um, we're talking about the impact of education on compassion. So right. we heard from Brother Eddie Rents earlier, yes. and um, we really would like to know about practical tips for the, the family when it comes to connecting education with compassion. Right. Well, and uh, Eddie Rents, mm -hmm. good friend, yeah. good guy. Um, I went to Haiti with him. And, uh, you know, it's really hard to learn to focus on education if you're hungry. Yeah. Mm. And so first tip I would say to parents who are listening right now, make sure mijo or mija has breakfast before they go to school. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, it could be all kinds of things. It could be oatmeal, it could be taquitos, whatever it is. Make sure that they get up early enough, which means they go to sleep early enough, so they can get up, get dressed, have a good breakfast, so they can go to school and focus on school. Because if you don't have your breakfast, if you haven't eaten, you're hungry. Mm -hmm. And when you're thinking about hunger and, and food, it's kind of hard to pay attention to the teacher. So tip number one, make sure the family has a good breakfast before they go to school every day, because this really positions them to get all they're supposed to get and, and to be blessed in a special way as they go to school. Yeah, as we think about, you know, you have a three-year-old and I have a five-year-old and we're, I know that there's a constant um, conversation among parents to say, how do we help our kids be grateful and not yes, be right. in this yes, consumerism, right. yes. me, me, me focus? Yes. And I think that what you're talking about really speaks to that because it allows your children to see themselves in ministry mm -hmm. and to yes. see that they can contribute, whether it's money or time, um, investing in other students, maybe watching you be a learning partner uh, yeah. or a reading partner. Um, I, I just think that that's really you know, we talk about felt needs, meeting the child right where they're at, but there are different ways to be hungry. There's, yes. there's food, yes. but there's also emotional hunger. And so yes. can you talk to us a little bit what, about what emotional hunger would be? Because if a student goes to class emotionally hungry, right. Right. they'll be distracted too. Right, and, and you know, uh, you know it's, it's basic things, but we have to say to, to our kids that we love them. Mm -hmm. We have to give them a hug. Uh, I had one son that just needed a hug every day. I mean, that was his love language. He needed a hug. I, I had others who, who needed just to hear the words. I just want to tell you, I love you. I'm mm -hmm. proud of you. Um, I'm praying for you. Go do a great job. Make us proud. Do your best at school. You know, if you bring b home a bad grade, let's look at it. Let's figure out how we can improve. Um, but it just makes a difference that your children know mm -hmm. that you care about them and love about them, and their school is important to you. Mm -hmm. And... I would say to my kids as well, listen, I'm going to have a hard day today. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to go into a tough meeting. Mm -hmm. Pray for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I need to know that you love me. And, and let them tell you, I love you, Dad. I love you, Mom. Mm -hmm. uh, makes a big difference for children. So emotionally, there is some hunger. And, and I believe God has given us wisdom to help feed that hunger. So what do you say to parents? Because there are some parents who feel really uncomfortable talking like yes. that. You yes. know, it's, yes. it's, it's pretty it's countercultural. Yes. So if you have a parent who feels like, ooh, that that's, doesn't really fit my normal style, what advice do you give to them? Well, you know, our wives make a big difference here. You know, my wife used to say to our kids, and, and I know other ministers' wives will say, pray for your dad. He's got to go preach. Pray for your dad. He's got to go make this hospital visit. Mm -hmm. Some people in the hospital, they're, they're not doing well. Pray for your dad. So, in fact, let's pray for him right now. Mm -hmm. See, that, that, that changes. That's a game changer. Mm -hmm. When, when mom and children are praying for dad who's out doing ministry or for, for dad and children praying for mom who's going to go make a visit or do, do some a speaking engagement, mm -hmm. that makes a big difference. And so I think that we can help our kids learn these, these practices mm -hmm. that gets them ready to do this. And, and, and the bottom line is that God mm -hmm. says to me and to all of us, I love you. Mm -hmm. his, whole word is, his whole word, the whole Bible is full of I love you guys. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, it falls on us as parents to help our kids know and, and realize this whole message of, of gospel is God telling us through His Son, Jesus, I love you, I care about you, have a plan for you. It's the gospel story. It's over and over and over in God's Word. And so because He says, because God says that, yeah. I think I need to learn how to say I love you to my children. Yeah. I need to let them know that I have concerns. They need to hear my prayer to God and be part of the solution. And then when, as God answers prayers, because He always does, yeah. it's just a matter of time, then I can say, remember we prayed about this? Mm -hmm. And I was going to have a hard day. Let me tell you what God did. Mm -hmm. God came in. He made a difference. He gave me this idea. Mm -hmm. Or he helped somebody change their mind. Mm -hmm. God touched their hearts. All of a sudden, we had a, I had a better day yeah. than I thought I was going to have. And it's because 
we as a family prayed. Your mama prayed for me. You prayed for me. Your prayers make a big difference. Yeah. See, that's that emotional, mm. that emotional yeah. issue that that's we're talking beautiful. about. Yeah. So, Dr. Ritz, you're really saying to be transparent. Yes. Mm. And not overburdening the child with no. adult responsibilities. No. Right. no, But letting them share in the family yes. values of yes. prayer and, yes. and knowledge. Yeah. What a beautiful testimony. Amen. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. I mean, the Bible is really clear about suffer the little children not That's to right. come to me. That's right. Not to be. Yes. Well, you know, uh, we want to know what other adults are doing to help marginalized children. So take a look at this video and find out more. The biggest problem in our educational system today is the lack of equality. We have children in certain areas of our country that receive one degree of education, while children in the urban centers primarily receive another sort of education, one that is diminished and diluted. We have educational inequality. We still have segregated education in America, not just in terms of one race being in one school and another being in another, but the standards are different. Um, invariably, when you have a majority black, brown schools, they're lower standards. I think that our biggest problem uh, with our education system is that in different school districts, different states, uh, the goalposts are in different locations. We're failing our young people. Um, they're graduating from school, being passed along without the proper training to live their life successfully. This is a crisis. It is a serious crisis that must be addressed as expeditiously as possible. Hence, we are here launching the Faith and Education Coalition, a biblically-based Christian coalition, multi-ethnic kingdom culture committed to raising the standards across the board. Whenever the church gets involved, things happen and change. I mean, I know my father, Martin Luther King Jr., was the head of one of the uh, preeminent movements for social change in the world. And it was faith leaders who led that movement. Uh, and so faith, we need the faith community to get involved and get involved directly. I have a favorite saying, and that, and that is, be a king and raise the standard. That's what we need in America. Welcome back to the Raising the Standard show. We are so excited to share with you our 40th episode. Thank you again Praise for letting God. us open the door, uh, be able to be in your homes and open uh, your homes to us. And we just are really grateful to the Absolutely. Lord for that. Thank you. Um, you know, we've been talking about the impact of education on compassion, mm -hmm. and it's really about helping your students see the world around them. What are the felt needs around them, whether it's somebody who needs a friend or whatever that looks like, that we have our eyes open and that we're using what God is equipping us to do um, educationally to bless others. Absolutely. Intentional. Yeah. To intentional be, yeah. Focus. Very yeah. intentional and to be focused on what Christ has for us. Our, our um, earthly assignments connected to our eternal purpose. We want to bless you in the name of Jesus. We're excited that you are raising the standards at home and teaching your children to love the Lord with the entirety of their minds. We'll see you next time. God bless you.